Every movie is different, right? This movie is very, very different from what people have seen before. It's not Star Wars. It's not anything, you know, uh, like Star Wars. It's, it's science fiction. It might not be a galaxy far, far away, but David Lynch's Dune takes viewers to a world unlike any other. He who controls the spice controls the universe. Long live the fighters! There are things in Dune that are abstract, but that's part of the book. It's, I try to be true to the essence of the book Dune. Following several failed attempts by others to bring Frank Herbert's best-selling novel to the big screen, Dune hit theaters in 1984. Put your right hand in the box. What's in the box? Pain. The epic film stars a then-unknown Kyle MacLachlan as hero Paul Atreides. Paul was one of the, the early hero figures for me. Um, and so it, it somehow, it was a very strange feeling, but it seemed kind of right. Um, that I was auditioning for. Father, the sleeper has awakened! He'd never even seen a camera before, and uh, we did a screen test. It was the first time he'd ever been in front of a camera. I wasn't happy with it when I first saw the photographs of him because he was not the picture I had in my head. But when I saw him on camera being Paul, I was delighted. He's a good actor. What do you remember most about filming that movie? Oh, gosh. Um, it was my first film. Um, and working with David Lynch and an extraordinary cast of really talented people from all over the world, um, including Sting. I will kill you! You heard that right. The police frontman gave life to the monstrous Fade Rotha. I didn't want Sting because he was a rock star. And then I saw him in a film called Brimstone and Treacle. I said, I, he's got to be. He's perfect for this character. And now in the, uh, many places in the world, people think Sting is almost the star of Dune because during the time of Dune, he became a superstar. But then they become uh, crazy because he's only got a small part in the, in the picture. But he does a great job, and he was super to work with, but he is, um, he's not the star of, of Dune. This was the first time we actually appeared in a cod piece. My wife really liked Dune. She didn't go to see it because of me. It's okay. I, I, still, I still have these. <laughs> you do. The film also introduces another actor into the sci-fi genre. I'm sorry, Gurney. Not sorry enough. Patrick Stewart credits Dune for making him feel at home in The Final Frontier. Make it so, Mr. LaForge. Science fiction isn't new to me. In the movie Dune, I've uh, been in this environment before. That environment? Spaceships, futuristic temples, and a desert planet crawling with sandworms. Gods, what a monster. The creation of the sandworms fascinated me because I was af afraid from the first that we would have the dragon come out of the sea and eat Kyoto. <laughs> I wanted a certain verisimilitude that, so that it wouldn't shock the viewer out of the film. They would believe this thing was real and when it came out of the sand. They did a beautiful job. They have a kind of a monster Muppet. And if you're looking at it just straight on when it comes out, it just goes vroom, vroom, and like that. This worm comes out of the sand slowly, opens its mouth, and comes for you. And you better believe it's real. A lot of people uh, spend uh their day never thinking about a worm. And uh, worms don't give us, you know, too much trouble, but uh, on Arrakis, which is this desert planet in Dune, there are these worms that are uh, 1,500 feet long and about 125 feet high. But even with all that, Dune bombed at the box office and failed to recoup its $40 million budget. Every time there's, you know, something happening that everybody's waiting for, uh, the expectations go wild, and in my experience, nothing ever lives up to uh, my expectations. But it's a cool movie.
Kyle reportedly only made $25 a week on the project, but after became the Leo to Lynch's Scorsese. Working with David Lynch is such a such a treasure. He's just an, such a wonderful director. The pair teamed up on several projects, including Lynch's critically acclaimed series Twin Peaks. Diane, 11.30 a.m., February 24th, entering the town of Twin Peaks. A role that earned Kyle two Emmy nominations. But when it comes to Dune, Lynch calls it one of his biggest failures. He says it's because he didn't get final cut. People love to discover a film. And when they discover a film, they fall in love with it and it, and it, and it grows. And, and really, it, it's, you know, it's good that you know, this is, is happening for Dune because now people can go in and, and discover that it's, you know, it's something special. And they go into uh, another world and, and become lost in it. Are you happy with what you've seen? Oh, I'm delighted with it. And now, it's a certifiable cult classic. They've been playing the original a lot more on TV now, I've noticed. They have been. I know, it's sort of given it a little bump, which is fun. Fun to go back. Man, we were young.